Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today, live streaming, I'm going to show you how you can paint this gorgeous scene of winter apples. These are, I believe these are Honeycrisp. <laughs> I'm not a total expert on apples, but I do love me a Honeycrisp, so I'm going to call them Honeycrisps. Um, I learned some fun, interesting apple information this year, which was super inspiring. I know, strange thing to be inspired by, by apples, but I was, and I love a still life because they're so much fun to do. Now, on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. How we do these lessons is we do them as a team. And John is going to make sure that the cameras are pointing at what you're looking at, that the color is balanced as we go through the different stages of the painting so you can see it. Um, you're going to be able to see my paint palette and my water. You're going to be able to see the brushes that I'm using. I'm going to explain the techniques. I will show you how I sketch this in. But I provide a free traceable. You don't have to be a patron to get the traceable. Um, that's just available on my uh, website, and I will have that up for you guys ASAP after the show. Um, so that's available for you. A lot of people like to watch the show live, uh, meet everybody, say hello, get tips, get their questions answered during the process, because I, I won't be there with you during the paint. So sometimes it's nice to come into the live show, get your questions in, say hi to your friends, get your tips, get your tricks, get your sales, and then kind of paint on a replay. Now we'll go over all the materials on this and you can ask questions during the live show. If you have a question in the live show, uh, put it in caps so that the moderators can help you. Moderators here are not art cops. They are hosts. Um, they're just fantastic viewers like yourself who've been here long enough to know what 2,500 videos I've made because that's how many it is. It's a lot to keep track of. We're now at the point where sometimes I don't even remember my own painting which is a really special time of life to be in as an artist where you're like, could be me, looks like me. Let me go see if I can find the video. <laughs> so there's some, there's some weird stuff going on there. Let's go over the materials real quick as we do this. This is an eight by eight surface and I have divided this eight by eight surface with a vertical and horizontal line every two inches. On complex still lifes, I find that this does help me not get lost in my relationships because sometimes I'll make things a little fatter, a little skinnier. I don't know. They have their own little wandering thing and this is my personal strategy. However, as I suggested, you will have a traceable and if you want to draw along with me, I would suggest that you divide your canvas into two by two um, just because it helps. Every two inches of vertical, every two inches of horizontal. Now on the colors, I have these all out in their tubes right now because I know this is going to be longer painting and my paint will be drying out. I have Cad Red, Quinacridone Magenta, Cad Yellow Medium, Yellow Ochre. I've got Burnt Sienna. I have some Deoxazine Purple here because I feel like it's going to become in useful, especially in relationship to the Yellow Ochre. I've got some Thalo Green, Titanium White, Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Mars Black. And in here somewhere, uh, oh, there it is. I knew I could find it. I have a little zinc white and then sometimes I like to use fluid paint if um, I'm doing lines, but I don't think I'll need to. I might use the zinc in this particular one. Actually, I probably will, especially in these subtle background atmospheric areas. So basically, I just build this whole painting. I'm going to paint this live. If you've never seen this before, I paint it live, but it's not a watch me paint. Uh, while you enjoy coffee, though, you're certainly welcome to. It really is a learn how to paint for yourself kind of show. So I will be deep diving each step as we go. There's no fast forwarding. It's just me show, showing it, demonstrating it, and explaining what's happening on my canvas and what could be happening on your canvas. All while being supported by many of hundreds of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life. Because honestly, our live chat does sport some really cool crews. Yeah. I don't have all my brushes yet. Um, that's because I kind of like, as I'm going, I pick them. <laughs> you're not sure yet brush hoard yet and then so yeah i'm not sure but i do know eight by eight surface and these colors of paint and i'm going to put back um the stuff i don't think i'm going to be using right off the bat and then put out my paint for that and then we'll go on to a step how are you feeling today john Hmm. I should have had you good. eat my coffee before we started. Well, I'm going to go come in and eat your coffee now I that you're all getting started. I should have had you do it got, before we started. As soon as I hit step one, I'm, I'm going to come go. over here and put out some ultramarine blue. Mm, also going to put next to it some phthalo blue. 
Well, you've so been using the top is ultramarine blue, the bottom is thalo blue. You've been using a lot more Sennelier paint. Um, I have Golden, I have Sennelier, I have Holbein, I have M. Graham, but mostly I have Sennelier. I have mostly Sennelier. Yeah. And, and it's awesome. There are other awesome paints. I have a really cool blog about all the acrylic paints out there, and then I have the ones that I've used that I like. And uh, I don't mind sharing that with anybody at all. I'm just putting out my little colors right now, what I think I might need in my initial sketchers. But you know how sometimes you uh, put the caps back on and then they don't want to go back on? I am terrible. Do not, <laughs> do not do as I do with my paint tubes. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do that way. Don't do this way. It's not <laughs> the right way. <laughs> I'll go over the paint colors again pretty consistently throughout the painting. So I, it's not something I expect you to memorize where everything is. Right. Um, and it is something that I will be um, going over again and again and again and again. So uh, okay. you will get to know. That was purple I put out. And I think I will go ahead and... Mm, Put out a little red and maybe a little yellow to start my day. That seems like a good plan. And you're going to heat my coffee? I'm going to heat your coffee. You should have like, held off the show to heat that coffee, well, sir. What, okay, held off the show. You tell them what paint you got there. I'm going to go over that paint and you heat my coffee. So I have put out a set of colors that will help me get the underpainting in and the rough sketching in. Um, you'll see that I have primaries here, but I also have uh, a little bit of a split primary. I have my cad red medium, my cad yellow medium, my thalo blue, my ultramarine blue, my burnt sienna, my yellow ochre, my dioxazine purple, my Mars black, and my zinc white. I mean, my titanium white. Titanium. I am titanium. So, all the artists say, yep. Now I'll put out a little zinc over here in the corner. This is that very transparent white. So see how on this tube you can see the black lines showing through the tube. Golden is a good color. If ever you're in an art store, even if you don't buy this company's brand, um, sometimes they're a good company to look at because they'll swatch out their paint on the tube, the actual paint, so you can see the actual color, how transparent it is. It's very, very nice. And then um, from there, you kind of know like, a company like this, they've been in business like 250 years, 280 years. They're pretty very specific about their paint colors. And these two companies are probably equally picky. So sometimes this paint company tells me something about this paint company, even if I haven't swatched anything yet, if that makes sense. It's a guide. It's not an exact because they're different, but it is a guide. And it's a weird trick that I do to help me when I don't know sometimes. Yeah. So in step one, I have gridded out two, every two inches of vertical line, every two inches of horizontal line. And now I am going to loosely sketch in my sketch. I am going to do this in paint so you can see what I'm doing. So let's start with the apples. If this is the halfway point, I'm going to put my vision enhancers on. Taking a deep breath. Breathing in my creativity. Releasing my stress. I'm going to come, if this is the halfway point, let's come up a few inches above that and make a little bit of a dot. And I will mark up a little top of an apple. Now coming here, I'm going to Come from my center. Bring in my little apple shape. There's lots of room here towards this edge. Now, I may not actually see the whole apple, right? These three in the center. Make sure you have at least a half inch, inch over here, a couple inches over here. I do sometimes like to um, sketch in some of these shapes, even though I know I might paint into them. I'm going to go ahead and add my center here, my center here, and my center there. Not too bad. Not terrible. Okay. 
I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna. I'm going to come at the two inch mark. Here's my halfway point. I'm going to stop before my halfway point with a vertical line. And come over horizontally. And then this is a half inch from the side. That's what I need to know there. The front of my table is a half inch from the bottom. It's really nice sometimes on something like this, you think you need a lot of lines, but you don't. I can sketch in the gesture and the motion of my berries and things, but I don't really need to at this stage. Now, this is the two inch from the bottom mark, so come up about a half inch from there for your apples. And you just want it to be there. We've got snow that's coming back here in a few places. I'm going to come a half inch from the side. I will talk a little bit about my little wood coming down here. It's like an outdoor potting shed. And I'll go ahead and join that there because this is built with like two by fours. It's like it's just cobbled together, right? And that's sort of a fun thing is that it's cobbled together. And you got to kind of love that. Bring a little vertical line up here. So you can see the spacing and the lines that are vertical. And these little spacings, they start to create our little shapes. They don't got to be perfect. We don't have to do everything perfect, perfect, perfect by any means. I just have to say how wonderful it is to see all of our friends in here hanging out and chatting today. It's a lovely day to see everyone in the community. All right. So we've got just a little bit of sketching in and it doesn't take too much. You only need to know where you've got major structures. What's uh? How's your building built? What's your views? How is the placement? Uh, threes are sometimes called a rule in art. Um, what I'll say is there's very few rules in art except where it comes to studio safety. But in design, arrangements of three are often pleasing to us for balance, especially when they're collected together. And then when you add little elements of twigs and berries that pull lines in different places, Still life is one of those weird subject matters that we sort of like discount a little bit and yet is pretty awesome and serious and neat in the design space. Um, and people always like a still life. It's it's kind of nice. Like it's one of the few places in art where people be pretty, even if they're highly opinionated in art, they're pretty chill with you. They're like, oh, it's a nice still life. I mean, the most you might get is like, that's a very well painted still life, but it's a still life. And then you can be like, yeah, I know. I put the fruit there, it laid still, and then I painted it totally know how still lives work dude <laughs> you kind of know how i was in art school <laughs> it's still life yeah if it wasn't it would be a much more exciting day in art school wouldn't it if yeah. all the fruit got up and ran away and i think that's how michael the goddard ended up with all those little dancing olives don't you this some, is this is great some person folks are, are we up for step two? Oh yeah folks are excited to try this one here this is like the I'm excited to 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 share this with you guys. I think you're going to love it. We've got some beautiful lighting. We're going to take it to some really lush. There's a lot of fun things that aren't normally together. The snow against the apples. It's kind of a fun combo. Mm -hmm. Let us continue on, my friends, and I shall put on my glasses because that will help me and pick a brush. That will also help me. I think I'm going to take an angle brush. I'm going to take an angle. And let's paint some of this little outside area, which is just like fantastic. So I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre and my cad yellow together. And it kind of just mixes a really interesting little mid-tone. I'm going to go ahead and get a lot of white into that. I have to get my brush a little wet. That's okay. Now, I put my lines down on my pencil marks pretty dark. And this is why I don't generally have you guys do pencils. But sometimes teaching you, I have to do a thing for the purposes of you being able to see it a little mm -hmm. and not so much the end result. The reason I'm not 
at all concerned is this particular type of painting it's going to have a lot of layering in it and all of these pencil marks will disappear Here is what's called blocking in. This is a neat part of the process where I kind of start to put color on the canvas. And that color is generally like maybe the a little bit the value, the lighter dark something is, but it's also um, the hue and you start putting things out and, and like testing it out and being like, I like it, I don't like it, it's good, it's not good. One of the fun color combos we get to do today is a bit of our ochre and our purple. That's my docs purple. And you'll see real quick, that it creates some interesting, interesting space out there when we have to sort of gray purple at all. So I'm going to start to add this little bit down here, I think, but loosely. It's just the start of a thought. I'll be irregular with my brush strokes. The start of a thought. It's a nice thought. It's a nice thought. It's a good thought. Good thought. Okay, you've got a little thought there. Now I have this here, and I need to figure out my spatial relationship, so I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna. And I'm going to solid paint this in, and then from here be like, oh, do I like how it is on the surface? Check it with my T-square. Uh, I have to check my work i have a bit of an unusual little brain and sometimes it does some weird stuff with me so you will find me often checking my space especially in roses or architecture because i can't swap letters and lines numbers i'm known to swap a number or two all right i'm gonna go more into my burnt sienna for this one and it's not a big difference but what it does is it just says it's still kind of in that brown space, but it's just a slightly different color than this. Now I'll go ahead and paint in that vertical line. It's about an inch wide right there. Go look at that. Get a breath. How are you doing? Great. You're great. A little more blue here. I love how this is turning. This is just this is really nice. I like how it's framed. How it, it it's just it's a very nice looking still life. I do. I just very much. Uh, I love still lifes. I do. I actually really like to paint still lifes. I think, like we did once we did a still life that took a week to paint. I'm always sorry I haven't done that again because that was a lot of fun. We had to get together every day live, but it was a lot of fun. Just spending time in a calm way and not just wearing ourselves out completely. That was a good time. Have to do that again. I had that pumpkin still life we just did. You guys really enjoyed that. And there was a lot of requests to make sure we got some more winter still lifes in. This one was a lot more blue. And I liked it for that reason. Go ahead and add some more white to this. So this will be like a blue gray through here. I'm not its darkest color and I'm not its lightest color. How do I know what colors to block in? Well, some is that I worked in my mom's studio and that was my job was blocking in, designing and blocking in. And so I had to do that a lot. <laughs> that definitely helped. But also what I learned to do was start to see what a predominant color in an area was or predominant undervalue in an area. Um, sometimes it's noticing that there's this weird under kind of glow of yellow and then you go in and you do yellow and that creates the glow. And sometimes it's just going, there's a lot of neutral gray here. So if I start with a neutral gray, I'll be able to add anything I need very easily. This was the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. This is kind of what I'm doing everywhere here, but you can see by mixing more blue or less blue and more white or less white, I have quite, I could probably do a whole painting in with these 
with ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and white. Probably. And we're still doing the underpainting part, right? We're still doing the underpainting part. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of my, my burnt sienna and a little of my yellow ochre. And I'll go ahead and get into that one little color I had mixed up earlier. And I'll just make a slight lighter value. Just slightly lighter value, guys. Doesn't have to be huge. You know, just make every, uh, this is like a time when I kind of like to think about lines and stuff, cover canvas, those kinds of things. All right, let's look at that. It's looking good. Looking I don't fantastic. hate it. Don't hate it at all. All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow and my yellow ochre. And I think, interestingly enough, maybe even a little of my ultramarine blue yeah and this gives me a green gray kind of little color that i will do the top of the apples with i'm gonna paint over that red no problem So the reason I got real excited about apples this year, I don't know if you know this, but there was a there was this crazy thing that happened where for the first time in a long time, apple farmers had a surplus of apples. They had a huge surplus. I don't know if you know, it's like the price of honey crisps have been just like in free fall, been just like living on. You could just so get apples. Delicious. So many. Aldi has had so, abundance of apples. So uh, a lot of farmers, very sadly, were having to allow the entire crops to uh, go to rot on on the ground. I mean, it's just because it would cost more money to have them picked and they were just in this total crisis and then somebody was like well, let's take 10 million dollars and buy a bunch of apples from farmers subsidize the farmers and then send them to food banks and so one day food banks just woke up with just apples yep they're just so like ready. they didn't even know it was coming it was just like they were just raining apples and like great apples especially the apples that are like less than perfect because like the imperfect apples, even the applesauce people were like, we don't need no more apples. So there's just so many apples. And only a couple states got to participate in it this year. Unfortunately, a lot of growers lost their crop, but more are going to be able to participate in it later. And I think it's like the coolest thing for food banks ever. Because as you know, I'm about an edible forest. <laughs> so an edible forest, like feeding people is just, it makes me so happy in my soul. Let's paint the pot. Anyway, so that's where this painting came from. If you're wanting, I'm going to take a little cad red and a little docks purple over here. Together. And so it's still red, but there's it's darker. Anyways, Colors. that got me super excited. And that's why you are painting apples in the snow. And um, if you think about it, uh, enjoy some wonderfully priced apples that we have. Like, we you know, we're talking about the cost of everything right now going up, 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 up. Enjoy some apples. I agree, by the way. I don't enjoy the cost of everything going up, up, up. Huh. Not my favorite. No. Now, this is what we would call an underpainting. And the idea of this is, and all paintings kind of do this, and this is, you know, in, in watercolor, we sort of like do washes and we're revealing and it develops up and it has all these pretty stages. Where acrylic has some weird stages, this would be one of them, this the underpainting stage, and this is sort of what we do just to get paint on the surface. Now, you could paint all these colors around the side if you didn't want to have to frame. If you're going to frame, paint at least around the edges enough that the frame covers everything. Uh, Claire Belford is here and says, thank you for the encouragement. I'm my worst critic, but the pumpkin still life actually turned out so well. I'm watching now and we'll put this video on loop to paint it later today. And Gay says, honey crisp is my favorite apple. Oh, they like justified Harry and David for me for so long. But then when they started showing up at the grocery store, I'm like, that and cotton candy uh -huh. grapes. 
in Concord grapes and in uh, muscadine grapes. Oh, if you live in a place that has real wild muscadine grapes, how blessed are you for those grapes? Yum. Mm -hmm. Let's dry our surface, come back and paint what's next. Keep painting. So thank you guys all for being part of our community out here. It's love to see Gay Spangler and Beth and, and Virgo and Charles. I'm going to keep scrolling up here. And Victoria. I got my, where'd my mouse go? No, I can't find my mouse. I have so many screens, guys. It's crazy. The mouse cursor is... Oh, there's Lubella. I see that. Where'd my mouse? Mouse, 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 mouse. There's a mouse. No. Gee. I have, like... I I need to go to the settings and make the... the there it is. Make it bigger. You know how you can control that? Anyway, you don't want to hear about my cursor woes and all of that other stuff. Um, we got to be here... Because everything's drying out today with the heaters on. It's going to take a little minute to dry. Glazing me. Well, before young. you get to that. Okay, before what? I get to that. I would, like, I would like to make sure that we let the people who are at a commercial break come back. Commercial breaks come back to because us. Because the, the secret is, is if I hit the commercial break button, then it waits a, a minimum amount of time before it runs another commercial. That way you guys hopefully don't get a commercial during the painting part. So... What are you putting out there? I am putting out some satin glazing liquid. And that's going to be for the third step. So this slows down the drying time of my paint, allows me to blend, and allows me to glaze. And it is my friend. And right now all of our heaters and stuff are on. So that Heating is my toes. going to make that much easier. Now I, I could, actually, I think I'm going to start out with a dome blender. I'm going to start out with a round blender. What do you think of that? Right here. Woo! I think it's good. I think it's very good, too. I'm going to come in here and get a little bit of my cad yellow. And my yellow ochre. And I'm going to smidge, smidge a little. The oxazine purple in it. Just such a small amount. I like to get a little glazy medium in when I'm having a day where it's all drying on me like this. I'm going to start to make little diffused foresty scene in the background. So this is this is our apple shed is out there and we've got some nice apples. Apples can last a really long time in cold weather with the right conditions. It, they are actually quite a good storage food. Let's see, I can just kind of work this one out. And even going over the dark color I had from before, look what it does. It, it goes over it, pushes it back, but it leaves like there's a little distance shadow. That is nice. Yeah. Sometimes that stuff is very good to get. I'm going to get a little ultramarine blue and a little... Um, Doc's purple and my yellow here. Okay, sometimes I take it to a little more ultramarine blue. It's an interesting graying of mm, maybe even a little more yellow here. Finding this gray is an interesting gray to find. It's good work. Because it's such a weird purple gray. And I just curl, curl, curl a little bit of irregular shape in the distance. We're just going to kind of make the uh, feeling that there's out of focus in Boca. Perhaps a little uh, forest out there. But it's not in focus, right? So we gotta we gotta make these these objects distant and diffused and not vibrant. Maybe they're close to the same value as the sky. That's a way that we do that. So ways that we can push objects back into the world is um, by desaturating, taking the vibrancy out of the color, by uh, lowering the contrast. Uh, so there's not as many darks and lights yeah. by just pushing every element 
that defines and makes an object readable into the distance. So well, not crisp lines, not bright colors, right? So that's what we're doing here. You know what salt and pepper said? Salt and pepper said what? They got, you got to push it. Push it. Push it real good. All right, back into my weirdy little gray color that I had over here. I like so much, and I like so much, and I'm just kind of making sure that this lower half is a little bit darker. But yet, the stuff that I'm putting out, it isn't like, you know, bright. And another thing we forget is I can go into my zinc, which gives me even another level of diffused transparency, which I love. I love this. This is just everything right now that I need. This is what I need right now. I get into that yellow that I had over there from the apple sometime. Gray. A little more yellow. You can kind of see what's happening is that dapples it, doesn't it? That starts to dapple some of this background light. The reason we want to do that when we're painting out of focus in the distance thing is because it's how they appear to our eyes. So by mimicking that, we can make uh, a world that feels further from us. Where is my Mr. Bottle that I spray with water? I don't know. Oh, there it is. You don't know where it is. I went. now know. This you is just it. water in a bottle. Water. I need a coffee warm up. And a bottle. I'm, I'm gonna, so I make, sorry. I'm going to make coffee while you... you have, we haven't brushed. We haven't done a step in a minute. Let's do a step. Let's do a step. I'm going to add a little blue over to that purple mixture from earlier. You can see I can get yellow into it. It's, it doesn't even... It's so weird. It just goes just more neutral. I'm going to come across with a horizontal line right here, kind of, into an apple. Maybe a little above it. Little horizontal lines there. Have we stepped already? Oh, okay. Just little vertical lines. I'm going to start to imply, oh gosh, little out of focus. We won't see sharp details back here. And we want to avoid giving ourselves sharp details back here. Maybe a little white. And I can come back over the apples. I can put any of my lines back, including a, a window frame line. So I don't worry about that too much. If I paint it out, I'll just put it back while I'm going. Got a little more white on here. Okay. Mm. I'm just doing some vertical brush strokes here. And this is again about what's in the distance. It's out of focus. I'm just doing brush strokes and techniques that imply the real world, right? Because it's a two-dimensional space. We're, we're definitely on a canvas. We know where we are. I'm going to just, you know, kind of horizontally here. And you can even get a glaze into it if you want it to be less.
Maybe a little burnt sienna. And again, don't forget you can put a window sill back, right? As long as you know it's like they're here or it's here, you can put it back. So if you overpaint it, that isn't going to hurt you. It only starts to get to you if it's just real hard for you to, um, let's get a little of this yellow over here. Maybe uh, titanium white, actually. I need it light enough. There we go. I'm just loosely painting this out. Brush strokes are not orderly, mm -hmm. right? Like the trick is to use your brush on your edge here, like where I'm getting a nice edge, but then be able to work it out. Right now we're just catching the values, catching the nature of things, building up dimensionality. One thing that I, I wish I could give you that isn't possible, I think, sometimes to give in video, is the depth of the color into a canvas. When we paint in this methodology, right, when we do this, when we paint in this methodology, there's such color, there's such richness into the canvas. I'm going to make this lighter around the apple, I think, here. It's okay to go into the apple. Just don't lose your line so much that you don't know where to put it back. Look at that right there. Pulling light into that. Let's pull light into that. Rinse out. All right. Lulabelle is in the house. I see Vugro rules and Charles agrees. Apples. They are all right. So if you're here on the replay, that's good to know. Uh, and also agrees about cotton candy grapes. I've got April Dickinson dipped in caramel and everyone today. Now, this could be that John has not progressed my chat. We're here on a live stream, painting live. Which, you know, when I started this, I had no idea that my ability to paint live and in person was going to become such a big thing in the future. And now I can see where, you know... Knowing what's real and knowing what's authentic and knowing who's been here could have a value. It's been real weird. A fun hobby has turned into a thing. Oh, man, I love coffee, y'all. I do, I do, I do. I'm now, you know, the only thing I'm regretting about this is that I chose to do it on an 8x8. I kind of wish I'd done it on a 40 inch by 40 inch. Because I think massive in the right house in the right space like if you went really big with this painting like really big really big it would just be gorgeous in a home my opinion i have here a number six raphael sepia round brush and i'm going to be getting back into my uh background tree colors again which we know is our you know our yellow ochre and little of our dioxazine purple we had some ultramarine blue in there and titanium white and some cad yellow so that's what we were playing with but now i want to yeah that's good start to put in some The lines that represent the distant trees, right? These are very close in value to the background. The trick to having things feel out of focus really happens when stuff is in close in hue and value because it, it removes the saturation. I'm making little distant lines. These are faint lines. They're, they imply the, the complexity of the forest. <laughs>
Sometimes I'll smidge out something. I'll be like, nope, you're just a distant, distant. Ain't got nothing at all. I'm going to go over and get a little bit of my... I don't blame y'all. I'm going to get a little more brown on this one. Kind of. All right, coming down. This is maybe a more defined tree. And what I'll do is I will fade it. Instead of fading it in the brush stroke, I'll fade it in a glaze. Gotta wiggle that up there. Woo. Sometimes I pull my brush a little bit, as you'll notice, kind of just to help it. I've got to get some horizontal lines here. This would be like piles of wood, right? So we've got to paint the detail without really getting too enmeshed in detail. So I'm going to bring that down on a horizontal. Go back through my trunks. And that's how we can kind of push those little piles back. Uh, painting that. It's just, you just got to come in and you start putting in the, the distance little hints of a world. You can loosely sketch them like distant little foresty stuff. Sometimes you just need some distant little foresty stuff. Thank you. You just play with it. You just work it out. A little blue, a little brown, come over into my mix from earlier. You just keep working it out, man. Just a trip. Making little short and irregular brush strokes to imply distant wooded areas is not against the rules. Sometimes what you're trying to do is just even represent the way that the lines break up or that space is irregular. So if I come here and I add a little dead wood into the distance that is super appreciated and then if I come in and get some white it's not white white by any means but it's much lighter than what's going on here and brush a little across there and some right there
just putting little distant snow and doesn't it just weirdly start to become if i pop little little lights of it out there into the woods here and there so strange but it does weirdly work making us feel like maybe there's snow back there I might bring my snow past my window pane a little bit. I'll put the pane back. I'm still using the number six Raphael Sepia. Just still trucking along, trucking along, trucking along. Chucking around, chucking around with the number 60 PO. Just painting inside these little trees here. You can see I'm just adding snow to the distance. If I go a little more blue, even if there's white in it, it's going to also feel like Maybe some snow that had some shadow on it. I don't know how to explain it, but that's what it do. Just adding these little moments out there. Sometimes when you're looking, when you're sitting, if you're sitting in this chair, looking out, one of the things that your eye doesn't make you aware of always when you're just sitting there in a relaxed way because you've just sort of got this infinite field of focus but you're mentally not focused on everything lenses right they're designed to see things in a range of focus and so a lot of what changes uh in painting is the way we play with those depths of focuses how you would paint this sitting here is very different than how you paint from a reference photo pretty you know mostly all right with that for right now i think i want to dry everything have a sip of my coffee and when we come back i will tell you what sip you're gonna do next right. yeah so thank you guys i'm gonna go over here check out our little stuffs make sure everybody's hanging out here with us in the in the, in the i got up my little windows checking it everybody out i am too jane loving this background so far it is it's a very nice sort of foggy background so that uh, it kind of sets you can use that really for just sort of any kind of you know generic windowy background area so <coughs> looks like it's coffee you know warm we gotta time. love it yeah Except yeah for, time for a step in a coffee warm-up step time for a step in a coffee warm-up i think is true i think i'm gonna grab a i'll try the eight textura lunabella has a joke now. lunabella has a joke lunabella. Oh, there. oh, Lubella has a joke. Yeah, Lula Lula Bell. Lula. Lula Bell. You can give me this to warm up. And it won't help. It, I don't. There's not enough coffee to warm up. You but a new one? I think I'll need a new one. I've got to come and find. I got to find an eight without any paint on it. Hi, Lula Bell. Why did the apple pie go to the dentist? Because it needed a filling. There. Now you're armed with both techniques for distant woods and uh, a great joke for the bank. You're set up for your day. Let's get into our thing. We're going to paint some of our distant, distant wood. I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt umber and my yellow ochre and my number eight textura Z brush. And I'm going to come brush this sort of down. And right here, I'm going to brush that down. I like the D brush because it gives me both a filbert and a blender. 
But you could just use a filbert here if you wanted. I just like that it has some. All right, that's doing pretty good. Go into my blue gray. And from the top, I'm going to bring some blue gray down. Then I'll just go get into my yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And come up from the bottom up into it. Just getting those textures in right now. And then can bring some of that right here. Maybe a little more blue gray. I haven't rinsed my brush. Little burnt sienna, little ultramarine blue, little yellow ochre. Getting it out down here. Goes right across. Nice layering. So you've got that blue underneath and you've got that yellow brown kind of coming up and into it. Now here I may get into a little of my burnt sienna and my Mars black together. And they're going to make a much darker brown. And I'm going to paint that up and a little bit around that apple on the right hand side, but not all the way to the top. I also am going to come here and pull down a little bit of this and the left hand side and a little bit on the right and kind of through just so that there's some peeking in and out. Just darkening it up. Now come from the top and bring it down and just sort of darken it up a little bit. And dry brush that down. Dry brush that down. Now in a minute I will have to get these lines all crisp again. I am right now just getting color and texture and kindness and just dimensionality into it. Get a little bit more black and I'm going to make some just rough marks. See how I'm doing? Little rough marks. I want to dry this before I do the next thing. Because all the rest of the next techniques work better when it's dry. So let's dry yeah. it. And okay. we'll come back and we'll call it another technique. We can do that. This is really going to come together this well is looking, today. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, it really is. So for the apples look like peaches right now. Yeah, we're in the underpainting of them. They could turn into anything at this point. You could probably turn these into oranges or apricots or uh, mandarin oranges or uh, let's see what other kind of fruit I can think of. That's probably it, though. But you could turn it into any of those little fruits that you wanted if you wanted to and just have them in there because this is the understate underpainting part where... It's before they painting. become what they're going to become. Before so they can, it becomes what it shall become. They can be anything. It can be anything they at have, this stage. They have, they, have, they have fruit potential. So much fruit potential. I'm going to get some chalk out because I think I'm going to reset some of my lines. Oh no, I have so little chalk left. So little yellow chalk. Come here, little yellow chalk. There's so little love you left. Sometimes the problem is just getting a nice tight line on this stuff. I think I 
might actually try tape. I'm going to use painter's tape right here and I'll just bring this down. And then I'm going to use painter's tape. I don't even need to worry about the bottom. Just right there. Okay. And I'm going to use my filbert. This is my uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and titanium white. I'm going to dry brush some of that into my wood there. And I'm going to come along with a little black. And I will just, as fine as I can, go along my tape with a black line. I'll sort of dry brush the little wood down here. I'm going to get back into some yellow ochre burnt sienna but i have not rinsed my brush sometimes what i'm doing as an artist will be evident to you guys because you'll see the activity but some activities are not as evident or obvious and one of the ones that's not as evident and obvious is that i washed or didn't wash a brush i come into my sort of lighter color here my white and just kind of brush that down a little bit a couple places Now I'm going to come along here, do a similar thing, straight as I can make it. And I may actually flip sides so I can burnish it down. Do you see what I did there? So that I've got a clean side on my tape to burnish it down. Okay, I'm going to have leaves going over here. Leaves probably going everywhere. You've met me. You know how I am. I'm going to go ahead and get into my blue-gray and some white. And brush down from the top. Now, I'm not going to go too close to my dark line I gave myself. I'll just be very careful with the edge of my brush here. This is my filbert, my number eight precision filbert. Just gives me a nice edge so I can do that work. I'm like kind of all the way down. Light dry brushing. And then back into my yellow ochre. Picked up a little bit of white. A little bit more white. And then again for that part of the wood saw. I'm not worried about the horizontal planks at all right now. Because I know me and my leaves. And I haven't decided like how much of those leaves are going to cover all that up. So I'm going to come back into a little of my yellow ochre and a little bit of my burnt sienna. Just brushing that down. Maybe a little more yellow ochre, guys. Uh, I think so. Okay. And I'm going to come get a little bit of white. And I don't mind if my yellow from earlier gets picked up into it. And I'm going to brush on the inside of that. Or tape line a little bit. I don't mind if um, it goes past where I'm going to put another harsher line. I just know that I want to have that there. 
Then I'm going to come in and get a little bit more white and get into my blue maybe, which I had over here. So blue, very, very light. I will have to figure out that horizontal line in a minute right now. I've just got to get the character of the wood in. But it's pretty fun to do. And you can see that light edge kind of gives us some light on the windowsill, which is nice. I really like being able to do that. I am going to come here again. Vertical as I can. But remember, this is a hand-built shed, so, you know, if... If perhaps the person who built it wasn't that concerned about every angle, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and get a lot more yellow ochre and white on this color than from before. And I'm going to go ahead and burnish down with my finger and make sure that there's a nice little inner lip of light where you know the wood would be caught but that forward facing was pretty dark so i'm going to come back into my ultramarine and burnt sienna and make sure that that inside lip where that light would be is cut in with the brush a little bit Maybe a little blue gray right here. Now we have the inside light on both of those ledges. It's just wild what you can do there. And that's, you know, something that can be a little hard to think about. But when you take that small amount of time and do that you get a long ways now while we're waiting on john come here and do a lot of these same colors like i'll come and get a little of my yellow ochre and my burnt sienna and white and just dry brush down some personality to this wood which will eventually just have a lot of snow over it yeah it will but we still see the elements of those textures and that is a big 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 deal go ahead and get a little black on here Now, sometimes when you paint architectural elements, you have to really have perfect joints, perfect seams, stuff like that, because the type of architecture at the cathedral was a precision type of architecture. And so those elements being um, so perfectly rendered out becomes really integral to, you know, the structure. But when you're talking, somebody just built an apple storage area outside maybe not as important now my snow color is my ultramarine blue and my and my burnt sienna and a little more burnt sienna here and under my apples i will go ahead and think about adding a little bit of shadow just thinking about that shadow right now. I'm just coming and working that out. That is ultramarine blue and bring it forward a bit because I know I'm going to have like little snow things and then under here. So I know I've got that as a shadow thing. I'm probably be bringing some of that down with the snow over this way. So I know that. I'm going to go ahead and add a little shadow over here on the left hand side.
Maybe coming up along the front. I know I'm going to need a lip of a shadow because, like, it's like all a shadow now. <laughs> if it's all a shadow, is it a shadow anymore? I don't know, my friends. I don't know. All right. I do need to dry everything and sip my coffee, and we'll set the lip now. Yeah. Mm hmm. Let me grab my hair dryer. All right. And we will dry it. Dry. And then it will dry, and then we'll have a nice little snowy lip. Yep. And then we'll come to add the snow. And that will be... That'll be nice. I was just going over here. You guys, I've been watching chat. It's really nice to see everybody here hanging out. And we really love having you guys here. Part of our community. Seeing all of you, at, you know, on a regular basis. We get to see you guys, like... Almost uh, every few days now, so it's it's been really nice, um, kind of getting to know everybody and, and seeing you guys get to know each other, hanging out. Um, it's really wonderful being part of of the community with you guys. So thank you, thank you for being part of that. You think you are ready for your next step? Yeah, I think I am. I think I'm getting. Let's there. see. I think I am going to take a little bit of yellow ochre and give myself a line so I can kind of see my horizontal spaces. Now I'm going to take another little bit of black. And I think I will kind of give myself just... Just a little hair of that kind of perspective, but really, I'm going to be putting a lot of leaves over it. So, I'll go ahead and get my dark snow color on my filbert. This is my number 8 Raphael Textor filbert. And I think I'm going to come through here and just... So once I have that kind of blue-gray going on, then I can, we're going to need an overhead because I'll be moving back to the other side. Come back in and start to build some up in the little cracks. Let's see, I'm just adding a little highlight. Might be going a little gangbusters with my snow. But sometimes that's what I gotta do. And I'm gonna be coming here and also... Thinking about the snow around everything. Might even grab a little bit of my uh, Thalo, which will, will be a powerful, powerful color in this. It, it just, it, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it, boy, it will cool your snow. <laughs> so sometimes just a little of it in there will just ice it up a bit. I'm just trying to get it to the 
the value set I'm looking for, how light or dark I want it to be. I'm going to bring some snow over the front of the workbench. Where I'm at right now, apple picking is just super huge. I just have a huge amount of apple picking <laughs> in my brain right now. Notice that I'm leaving lots of underneath. That's going to let the viewer's uh, brain kind of finish out the snowbank. And you do want to leave them some room to finish out your snowbank. Like even here where I'm, it's a sh it, the snow isn't, even in the shadow, isn't one value of cool. It's different values of cool that we built up. Another little value. We won't hit every, the lightest values of the snow yet because we've still got to put out vines in different things. I'm just pulling and trying to capture some light on top of that ledge. See how we're putting a little light of the snow on top of the ledge? Yes, no, maybe so? Oh, okay. I didn't know. I was actually asking you. I didn't know if you were just actually asking me or just yeah, didn't. Yeah. Sometimes you rhetorically ask me questions. So. I know, but I wasn't clear this time. So that's what I decided to be was not clear. And continue over here and just kind of. <coughs> so again, even the shadowed snow is still pretty painted. So is there snow? This is interesting because there's there snow in the house. It's not a house. It's a potting shed. It's a potting shed. So potting we're looking shed. outside the potting You're shed. You're just outside in a little apple potting shed. That's why you have snow inside and outside of your structure. Because snow is <laughs> so blown. It's a potting shed. So that window is probably not even really. It's, it's well. not a glass. It's why there's some, that's why there's snow all over see the See, it place. goes around that yeah. sill. See it going around the sill. There's no glass. That makes more sense. It does. It's a potting shed. So even on the snow that I've got here, I'm thinking quite a lot. Trying to make sure that my lip of this snow that's gathered here on the bench is thick. Making sure that I've got enough shadow there for that to work out well. Okay, let's call that a step and dry a everything. Dry everything. Dry everything and have a little thought. Have yeah. a little breath. Let's take a deep breath right now. Well, while I'm drying, remember to relax your body. Take breath, deep breaths in and let them out because you can hold your breath while you're painting. So it's important to. So yeah, that's a. Take a take a breath. Take a take a moment. We'll all proceed together. And yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay, Lindsay. Thank you for asking. Uh, 
I appreciate everybody hanging out here, and it's it's really awesome. Um, you know, uh, that was fast. That was a fast try. Mm -hmm. But it, I just needed. It yeah, is really, it really just, is really awesome to be here with all of you people. All the peoples. All the people. And we're gonna ready for. Right. Are you ready for another step? I'm ready for another step. I'm gonna take my number six uh, sepia and thin some black paint with water, maybe even blending medium, because I'm just trying to to get it where it will roll off the brush and fine lines. And I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna say there is. A little branchy branch, a rough twiggly bit, which is why I'm doing it with such rough, unsmooth little brush strokes. I am just finding all my little branches and twigs that I could start to think about in the basic shaping of what's going on in my world in the other very important elements of all of this, which is um, the leaves and branches. These become little cues, I think. To where we're at where we're located like I think if you're a person with an apple orchard you knew exactly where you were <laughs> you know because you probably had to spend quite a lot of time in a location like that well there's just branches kind of coming in some wildness that is just a foot and around I'm also going to take a little bit of my cad red and my dioxazine purple. And I'm going to add my berries. Now, what I try to do is that it's a weird thing. You'll see me sometimes add a berry and then sometimes add clumps of berries as their overall shape. And just so you understand what I'm doing mentally is I'm actually just adding the shape of the berries. Like what they are together. And then painting them in. Does that make sense, John? Yeah. We have any questions? Oh, I've got to paint a lot of berries for a while. we got a lot of berries. I will keep an eye out for this. We would normally be like, and fast forward the berries, but, but this can't. Could, I have no about, fast forward. You could talk about that this is among the 12 days of Christmas. So or right or now, how well, it's not 12 thing. days of Christmas. It's winter that, yeah. wonder. Winter wonder. So we don't It has anyone. Christmas, but sometimes it has Hanukkah. And sometimes it just has a winter landscape. Right? Sometimes it just has different different things that we all like to paint during winter. That's what it is. And so originally it started out the 12 days of uh, Christmas and then it became Winter Wonder. And it's now more than 12 projects. But we are officially in that. We probably will be through December 15th. Um, the materials that I'm using are uh, on the website if you wanted to get all the materials for it. And paint every single one you could. I would not be mad at you. I wouldn't be offended. Canvases, big, white, empty canvases can be really overwhelming and you can feel like you're lost in them. And sometimes the way that you keep from getting lost is things like grids or traceables and sometimes it's just paying attention to the berry next to you. Does the Art Sherpa store deliver to Canada having trouble finding catalyst brushes here without resorting to Amazon, says Risa Gluskin. 
Okay, I have, it's an older post in my community tab, but it is here and um, an older post over on, and I'll, I'll repost it, a list of the Canadian art stores. Um, there's a bunch of really good ones. Uh, and the other place that you can go for the brushes is the brush guys. We don't ship to Canada, but the brush guys do. And if you use the code the art Sherpa, you can get a discount off, I think, still. You should still be getting 5% off. Let me know if they're not still doing that. Um, but they were. So, and they have the brushes in. They ship to Canada. There's King's Framing and Art. I've got a bunch of Canadians. If you guys know a Canadian art store you like, shout it out right now. They're good to their peeps and they do fun stuff. Let, let, like, let people know. I'm just building up the berries, which is starting to create that. Now here, these were all one little misha berry, see? So that's why I could do all the shape together. You see the question there about cad red? I did not see the question about cad red. What other red can I use if I don't have cad red medium? Primary red, pyrrole red, uh, Sennelier red. Um, what's that red? Naphtha. I believe. And I got a berry here. Yeah, I do. Building a still life is super hard, guys. <laughs> Just so you know. It's one of those skills that seems like it should be super intuitive until you start arranging apples and bananas under in a bowl. And then you're like, what is going on? So enjoy these moments, like pay attention to what about this made this work. Like the fact that there weren't so many berries that I couldn't appreciate the berries that are here, if that makes sense. They're just another little splash of red. They balance the red of the apples and they balance the shape of the apples. Interestingly enough, in my opinion, take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my Mars block. Yes, I will. Come right here. Make my little stem. Putting my little stems in so I know where they are. Also, you know, they have nice arrangements. That's another nice thing that we get to enjoy is some of these little, these little delicate moments that are there. It's, uh, sometimes you don't always appreciate how wondrous they are. All right. Let's dry everything. That was a lot to get in. We got a lot of that painting in and we don't want to drag it. And I got to put on some green paint now. So I'm going to put some out. That seems like a good thing. So we'll get some more paint out here, and then we'll probably go on to another step. Oh, I see the questions. I'll, I'll tell Cinnamon here. Uh, and uh, the, 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 brush, the brush guy's code was, I believe, the Art Sherpa, or Art Sherpa. You can try both of them and see which of those works. Uh, hmm? They were just going over and checking out to see if the brush guy's uh, stuff was still working. Did it work? Okay. Know. We're not, we're oh, not sure. let me know. Because if it does, they do they do global shipping and they carry a lot of the stuff that I carry. 
Um, and so, and they have that global shit. And so far, no complaints. I let, like you guys know, I let you guys share that stuff in the group, and everyone's been pretty happy so far. So I'm happy. If you're happy. If we're happy together. Then we're happy. I think I'm gonna open up my green tea, my Arizona green tea. Because I need to get into the business of painting the leaves. Now I'm going to use a big round and I'm going to do that because I feel like it's going to help me. Um, sometimes the shape of a brush can make the painting uh, object a little easier. And I like that this can go wide and pull in. Um, we'll see how it behaves with the paint. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna into my... Stay a little green and I'll go ahead and get the cad yellow into it. Come between these apples. And add that little green leaf. Then there's sort of this interesting little forward facing green guy. And this is just what we can see pushing out of the background, right? So these are the leaves that are coming out of the dark, out of the dark, dark, dark. So I can then use this to then piece together the puzzle that is them. This is a little crunched, so that's why it's shaped all wonkety. I'll get the front of that. That one has like a lot of little lipped edges and stuff. So I'll have to get that. But I'm just getting my green down. And I'm doing it uh, where I can see it. Even though it needs to be darker or minter or other things sometimes. I'm just trying to make sure that I can see it. How I need to see it. That's pretty good. And coming here. What I recommend is try to avoid painting the symbol of leaf, which is what your brain wants to do, right? It goes, it goes, leaf looks like this. This is leaf. And it wants to give you, you know, a leaf shape and just pay the paint, the crunchy, smushy, hot nonsense that it is. Pam asked a good question. Hmm. Should you paint an, a ground before doing an underpainting? Sometimes you do. Sometimes could. you paint like a ground. Um, a good example of that, the the best like example of that where you really, really see it in action is if you check out Bob Blast. When he does his abstract figure, sometimes he does a hot pink ground before he puts in the painting and he'll still block in the painting to do a bit of an underpainting before putting in the whole painting. So it's sort of a, a great example of seeing that with such wild colors that the, uh, that the, that what's happening feels very uh, like uh, easy to understand. I'm going to go ahead and just sketch in the shape of this leaf. It's not the value, it's not the hue, it's the shape.
it might be easier to 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 negative space the leaf and so i'm going to paint the full leaf and then paint the bites out where a uh, pest has eaten at the leaf i'll paint those out when i get into it but i just uh, want to get it in first So you can go right behind the stem with the leaf. Just a little bit of phthalo green, burnt sienna, and cad yellow. What's up? Mm. Lulabelle. Sherpa, is the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who, can we have the TARDIS emoji back? Yes. Yes, after the show, I'll put it back. I found it, I put it back. To have it. That's reasonable. You can also have a... Christmas Doctor Who special if it's the 60th anniversary. Is that okay, John? Since it's the 60th, we do a 60th anniversary Doctor. We haven't done a Doctor Who painting in a minute. We could do one uh, uh, for the Christmas special. Uh, if you guys don't know, there are Doctor Who is a science fiction show that's run for a very long time, and they do a yearly Christmas special. And I've done a bunch of Doctor Who paintings, and we have a lot of Doctor Who fans in our community. And sometimes that's fun to uh, kind of come and play with. It's okay if I paint my leaf a little over where I think it might be, you know, in relationship to the apple. We don't mind. That's all right. Look at that. We just laid in our leaves. You just do this stuff. You, what you do is just you just go through and you're like, this is what I'm doing. Step by step. Step by step. You just take the steps. You do the steps. Then you get where you're going. It's pretty awesome. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, phthalo, uh, uh, phthalo green and a little of my yellow ochre, interestingly enough. And then to some of my cad yellow. So I've got a little range of these. And All right, am I on a new step, babe? Just want to see how these little leaves will work out for me with this little brush. So I'm just working it out. A little white and yellow. You got to find that tune in, right? What happened there was there was a drop of water on my brush and it ran down and it got me. Not my favorite. As you guys know, the hidden drop of water. Just taking a little bit of this mint green. So this is, you know, just running a little bit of that mint and adding a little bit of white to it and 
Doesn't hurt to get a little glazing medium. Truly does not. And I'm just adding a little bit of these little highlights there. I can put stems back if I feel like I need to. That is not particularly hard for me. So if I'm going along and I'm like, ooh, I need to add a stem back, I just do that. Adding a little darker green. And it's just finding the shadow. There's this highlight along here, and then there's the shadow in here. And then on top of that, there are some folds and wrinkles and with some wonderfulness that you get to play with that I really like. I'm going to come here and just add a little bit of the background color. Remember how I talked about I'd take bites out of my leaves. I'm going to go back into my background. It might even be better to, to like... Do the bug bites. Kind of after we can see them. Just get a little bit of the background color and it just shows through and then now it looks like the leaf has been bit. I'm adding a little white to my more yellow-green color. <laughs> I'm, Amy, this is just one of those detailed paintings, so I'm, I'm letting Yeah, this is just one go, of them go, detailed go. paintings. Yeah. What's up? No, no, Amy was just wondering why I wasn't as talkative today. Oh, I know. It's because, you know, you've, this is a three, this is one of those serious paintings. It's a three hoot. It's, it's, you know, it's not that I'm not here to, to joke around, but, you know, got to do the business of the painting to get that done. So, you know. Thoughts of concentration, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna take a little bit of this here, get a little white into it. See, it goes fairly minty. And we're just adding little bits of. I'm going to get a little white and gray with a little color. The issue is that sometimes it's just even seeing what you need sometimes can be a challenge. Just find little bits of highlight, right? Little green. Yep. Little bits of highlight. And if I take it over to my brown and white, it neutralizes it out and gives me some of those more dried out leaf values. This is when I like to have a juicy palette and go around and get lots of different weird little greens and lots of weird different little values. Just 
just adding little highlights to an edge of a leaf, right? And then if you come in and you put in a little shadow, then you start to see the little shapes. I've got to see it two different ways because I can't get up and stand away from it. So sometimes you'll see me struggling to see my artwork from a distance. And so I have to take my up close um, stuff and then like take them off and then look at it again. So I'm just coming here and stroking along the direction the leaf would grow. I'm leaving a lot of my dark green where it was. Get into a little bit of the brown. A little bit of the cad yellow there. Brighten it up. Because why would we put that there? It's because it's going to be in a little more light. And because it has a little more light, it has a lighter value. That's all it is. Right here. It has a little more lightness to it. So I've got to add a little more yellow to that green, maybe a little more brown, green gold it a little bit because it dried out. Get some green gold. You know, maybe a little bit more burnt sienna through the stem. A little green in there, a little brown. Move it down that leaf. Just painting them. Painting them leaves. Paint a leaf. The leaf. And get a little darker green and work it in. You know, I have to say, I'm pretty lucky that I get to every day work with you here. Oh, this. thank you. That's pretty cool. I, think it's, I love getting to work with you here every day. A little more green right there. Kind of breaking up those leaves a little bit with the background snow color. That's all. Well, we're having a little thought about that. Having a thought. Let's put out a little quinacridone by our red. And just start to think about our berries. Come over here with a little bit of my quinacridone and my cad red. And you see right away when you do this next overpaint on your berries that that really reds them up. Mm. And I tend to sort of hit everything with just a little bit again.
just so that all my paint is a little bit juicy and everything is, is vibrant. And also while I'm here, I'm going to come here and sort of on my apples. Brush a little bit of that color in there. Cause it's just a great color for apples. Yeah. It's a great color for these apples. And we'll have to be making them so dark here where they are all meeting each other that the shadow is much darker than what I have. I'm still just on my number six. I'm just enjoying it. I can come in with my purple if I need to and darken my apples up. Pretty easily anywhere I might need to. Work on that shadow. See how that just shadowed it real fast? It did. It added a, a depth that just emerged. It does. So sometimes on these you've got to deepen them up enough to... Darkening in this space here and then only little bits of leaves and berries pop out only little bits of apples pop out to our eye. It's pretty awesome Look at us. There we go. Look at us go. Wow. We're just a paint and apple. It does have a hot mess look at some point. And that's just because sometimes, um, sometimes things go through an awkward stage that I just don't hide it, I guess is what it is. I'm like, yeah, it's just the painting. It's, 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 you know, it's growing in its little weirdness right here. But when it's done, we're going to love it so much. And come here to this berry and paint a little more of just the red, cad red and the quin magenta together. Mostly focused on the top right. Now that water thing you have over there, mm -hmm. what it, what's the advantage of having it and and why does it have so many little buckety things? So this bucket um, lets me keep my water clean because I can rinse the brush out in my center water water divider first and then go here and here for cleaner water. Oh. You have to bear with me, guys. It's super hard for me to see the canvas right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This angle with this much shine, very hard for me to yeah, see. Yeah. You can, you can lean over because I got you in the overhead. Okay. I'll lean to the left. Lean. So you but can it doesn't see. necessarily address my shine. Yeah, I know. I'm going to dry everything. All right. You can dry it all. <laughs> and I imagine you can start seeing some of the texture coming together on this. You see, as I come to the side angle, you'll see that dry up as it, it, it'll go from gloss to satin. And that'll help, uh, help you see how that's going. Oh, looking so good. Ah, looking so good.
It's looking okay. I'm not. I'm not hating it. No, I'm gonna I'm not grab it at all. a Thanks. number zero D brush. Go on to the next step. I get another zero D brush, and I am going to get a little bit of my yellow ochre. It's okay if it has a titch of green in it and some white. Yeah. And I'm going to begin the process of getting these little apples juicy. Now I do like to arc my brush strokes. Do you have any more coffee? Did the coffee I, I, ever I get made? I started to make some, but I haven't uh, finished making some. I have to go make, I had to make a new pot. Mm. You Are you ready for a whole new pot? Maybe, maybe we could call Spider. He's well, pretty good at coffee. I can do the pot. I think we're going to be okay. okay. I can go right. So I'm going to come here and take a little bit of my yellow ochre and my burnt, uh, not my burnt, my dioxazine purple. I'm going to come into what is the shading and the hole, the little divot in my apple where we pick it. I may paint over my stem a little bit, but that's just because I want to really get a good. A good little shader. Come here and do a similar thing. Sometimes you just got to get where the shadow is. Are you okay? Oh, I'm so sorry, babe. I'm grabbing a little more white and I'm adding a little more yellow ochre. I have not rinsed my brush. Kind of a weird putty color, but it works. Just scumbling back and forth, just kind of catching the top of that apple, which is light. All right, I can shade it back. I can scumble back and forth. I'm not worried. It comes down a little bit, I think, here. Little yellow ochre, little dark purple. Does a nice job making that center shade. And just push it around. I find when I'm painting apples that thinking about the directionality of the growth and the pattern marking on the apple is really useful. I have lost my stems a little bit, but I don't mind. At this stage, I'm not too worried about the specific markings on the apples or anything yet. But more just kind of value and hue and that kind of nonsense. Well, that is having a dry. I can come in and grab a little bit of my red color from earlier. And just sort of negotiate the beginning of a juicier apple I think I'll probably be at that in a minute I'm sure getting the exact 
everything, but for a second, I'm going to take my cad red over to where I have just a little bit of Quinn. I'm going to go ahead and add a little red there. This is a little Quinn, mostly cad. Now we're just starting to find, oh gosh, everybody, right? How each of these little individual berries lives separately from its little berry bar that's pulling them all apart from each other, right? Sometimes that's an important thing to do. I'm going to get a little bit of black on my Brush and I'll run the stem. Through here, but I don't have to worry so much about the stem everywhere, just a couple of places. A little bit of a crumpled leaf there, thinking about those things some. Now I'm going to get a little of my white. It's okay if it has some lazy meme on it because I need some yellow in it. Green and white. And a little bit of green in that thing. Just running a little bit of that white where we, where we can. And a little bit of light on top of that leaf. A little bit there. Just taking a little bit of that and just showing those little center veins and things to help define leaves can actually help us define the leaves. They were talking about, uh, you know, what kind of berries you think those are? Um, berries, maybe? Uh, I think. Holly berries? No. no. Current. Current berries? I think they're currants or gooseberries. Oh. Given the time of year. They're very berry. Not a thousand percent sure. But I believe every day's a good day if you paint. I believe. I believe. Just making sure there's some veins and stuff in some of these things. Sometimes just having that center line is enough to help it. You just never know. 
I'm going to go over here and add a little bit of yellow to my red mix. And I'm going to make sure that that drop that just keeps wanting to get on my round brushes isn't going to be here. Take a little C. Sometimes all you're doing is just finding the little divot of a berry. See how they just start to pop up. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my zinc over here to my red. That was my red, my cad red, and my quin magenta. Giving them some little kind of velvety expression. Add a lot more zinc into it, maybe some cad red, but just a lot more zinc. Takes a lot of zinc to lighten anything, is the problem with it. We're just adding highlights that aren't not, they're still red, is what it is. They're still red highlights. Just a little bit, right, to get them pumped up. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this orange here. And add a little to some of my wood. It's weird, I know, but it does make a difference in the overall. I'm going to take a little bit of my Doc's purple. I mean, my uh, burnt sienna. Yay! It's magic! It's magic! Painting. Thank you, Lindsay. I agree. Lindsay said that this group has helped her out and there are kind-hearted people here. Um, Lula Bell, do you use a specific glue for gold leaf? Mona Lisa, just if you're going to gold leaf for the first time, just get Mona Lisa speedball gold leaf setup. It's the easiest. It's the least expense for what you're doing. Like if you're figuring out if you like it, then you can get into 24 karat gold leaf and all the weird sizing and stuff. But just start with, with speedball Mona Lisa. Also for uh, brush sizing, it's a really good brush sizer that they have. I really like. Graphics is another good one. I'm just sort of adding some shadow shading to some of that. Now I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my yellow ochre, a little burnt sienna, and some titanium white. I'm going to highlight these little stems super carefully. I 
And interestingly enough, I'm going to take a dark color. That's too dark. Let's just do purple. I'm going to add some centers to these little currants. I assume they're currants, gooseberries. Cannot figure out anything else that they could even be. I'm using purple. I'm going to put it everywhere. Not every current needs a center. And the one I did the black, I don't like that. So I'll definitely like lessen that. So I can use my brush to pick it up and make it smaller and more diminutive and then it's not like a huge mistake. It's just another area of value. I'm going to take a little brown and black and come along my little rib on my leaves, making sure it's got a little extra darkness to it. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Coming to speak with you again. Little black and brown. Mm. Mm -mm. I am re. I'm painting, what, so sometimes I'm What type I'm not of seeing... glue would you suggest if you were going to put embellishments on a painting? Asks Pam. Pam, I I I want you to check me in, in case this is a very important painting. But if I were to, I would probably use E nine thousand. Mm -hmm. uh because it's very flexible um i might be also inclined to see if my soft gel or my gel polymer would work as a glue um sometimes it does i use it a lot in collaging and everything yeah. um to see how it hold it but if like you for sure you need see the issue is are you gluing to a solid surface like a masonite board or are you gluing to a canvas surface if you're gluing to a masonite board a lot of stuff will fix stuff to your canvas and leave it there but if you are on a stretch canvas like this then you need glues that are for fabric embellishments and you need like the serious serious ones because of the flexibility of the fabric yep no and just in general i'd like to say don't underestimate the power of your standard old pva white glue mm -hmm. it's some yeah. power stuff it's, it's a good place to use mod podge too mod podge probably makes a glue for that yeah But Mod Podge is not a sealant. Okay. All right. I love honey crisp apples the best as amethyst rocks. There's no pairs here, only three. Uh, it would be canvas and I can glaze it. Then, yeah, you got to think about the glue. You need a glue that's suitable for flexibility. One thing I might do if I had an important project is I would call the helpline at Golden Artist Colors and ask them what medium they make they would recommend for what I'm doing. The reason that I say this to ask this and frame it this way is you go, what medium do you make that would do this? If they don't make that medium, but they know that it exists out there, they'll tell you who does. But ask if they make one first, you know, be nice. <laughs> is that reasonable? I don't know. I think it is. All right. I'm going to take a little more yellow into my green and grab some white over here. And keep playing with the translucence of that leaf up top. Keep getting it wrong, and then I get it right, and then I get it wrong, and then I get it right. So irksome. <sighs> I'm adding a few little yellow spots. These are kind of like. What is it when you see this kind of light in a leaf is generally that the light is coming through the leaf, shining through. little green there in my white go a little minter that's pretty minty little hint of yellow in it but pretty minty 
I think. And coming up there on that one. Yep. A little bit. And then I can get over into my brown, which kind of neutralizes it. And I don't even mind because I just come down and paint it right in. I will get all over my palette. That's something I know I do. Is I'm always looking. I like getting this crazy green color, but I like it. So I'm going with it. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, I like you. How will I use you? Mm. Take some green over into that brown. I love it. It's got some white in it. Mint it up a bit. Come here. A little highlight there. I'm going to come get more green in. Starting to get that little leaf there, you know? Little highlights and love this painting. Says yeah, Sally. I'm coming back with my snow kind of crisp edge of that. Not yet decided where I want to go with it. Grab a little bit of my yellow green. Grab a little maybe more red and kind of imply that there could be currents here. I'm going to glaze a lot of this back into the background, but I find that doing this work now will help me later. Exaggeration that I've got going on all of that will help me later. Speaking of. I'm going to add a little white to that and then suck it back because it didn't work. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do there. Get into some different green. Uh, get into your, your brown and your green. You add more brown into it even when you add white. It kind of armies or neutralizes it out. The reason we call it army green army green is it blends. <laughs> they studied it <laughs> for its blending. <laughs> for its greeniness. For its green blendiness for entire environments. All right. So I'm going to come here and put a little yellow in there. A little darker green going in there. It is just an involved process. Just yeah. Okay, let's dry everything. Just dry, dry. Just dry it all. I'm gonna draw my coffee and have a look at it. Have a sip. 
Yeah, I might need to take a stand break. You might need to take me off camera. Hmm, I don't know what I'll do about that. I have to think about it while you're there. Have to see about how to give her a moment to go. Uh oh. I oh, know I gotta pop the hard drive because I ran out of hard drive space. Hopefully, we're we'll going. There we go. We got that going. Had to swap hard drives. Ran out of space. Oh no! That's okay. Just... That's a terrible thing. It we're happens. getting there, though. We're getting there. We're getting there. It looks like it's weird. It looks like I'm out of focus right now. So we're. Mm. I think I'm okay. I just yeah, I think you're okay. up and. Let me give you. Let me get you some. I think uh, I'm okay. I'm yeah? okay. Yeah, I think I'm okay. Let me get you set up so we can I have, move, a, though. have a little stuff in a minute. We can have a break in a minute. I think. Mm. I think it'd be better to power through. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next time you're ready for break. It All right. Takes me a couple minutes. So, um, are good. we on a new step? Uh, I'll give you a new step now. Okay. I'm gonna come through here. Let's work on the apples for a little while because they're looking a little not loving them the best. So I'm gonna work on them. And take a little bit of my cad red and a little of my quin and i will work some purple into it because the purple is such a nice neutralizer Trying to round out my apple. I get a little bit of my orange on here. A little bit of purple. Come back in and start to think about these shading. I'll curve my brush stroke in the shape of the apple. This does help. It truly does. We're going to go over towards the right. Now I'm going to take a little block and maybe a little of my ultramarine blue, maybe a little of my thalo blue into my black. And I am going to glaze what's going on between the apples. Little blue, little black, little glaze. Right here, because when it gets this glazed, it becomes very visibly dark and it's super hard to see anything. I think I actually have to increase the size of my top apple a little. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of this white out. 
come over to where this green is and get a little yellow. I'm going to come right here. Over the top with that light, light color. I still have room for one more highlight above this. I actually mind that my purple picked up on that brush stroke. It worked for that moment. And I'm going to bring this around this outer edge here. You doing okay, babe? I'm actually doing really good. Okay. Grab a little bit of my yellow ochre, titanium white, a little glazy medium so it doesn't dry out on us in two seconds, and... Took you back. Probably be. Refining that up there. I might move that little apple core back a bit. How's everybody doing? You guys handling everything I okay? I doing pretty good. Grab a little more yellow ochre. Now, you ask... Um... When people ask questions down in the comments, mm -hmm. do you only answer questions from patrons or do you remember answer everybody? Everybody. Questions? Everybody's? Everybody. Yeah. So th this is how it works. Uh, so <clears throat> I sign into my channel every day and it gives me my latest comments. Um, I go through and I spend some time uh, answering subscribers and patrons first. And then um, that actually, I go through that pretty quickly and then I answer everybody. Uh, I try to spend the same amount of time on it every day. Um, so don't answer only subscribers and I don't answer only uh, patrons at all because every day I'm answering people that are neither. But I, I do prioritize a little bit the people that go to the trouble to hit the bell. <laughs> you know what I mean? A little bit just to make sure I get that out of the way and say hi and say thank you and you know the patrons and people support us and then you know go right on out and answer our questions and then I I'm I'm there all the time doing that. I'm going to, I think I'm going to add a little more ultramarine blue to this mix that I've got going here. Yeah, uh, coming up over this curve, I'm going to go ahead and curve it and maybe do some dashes or something just to show that kind of shape. And you can kind of see that that creates that little shaping there. Yeah. I, you know, I was saying to John, like, I am not suited for fame. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, it's so uncomfortable. Um, like, like, like anything about that, I, I always look at what's going on for famous people and I just, none of that looks fun for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think of myself any, in any terms related to the words fame, right? Like, I, I know I'm known because I teach online and I teach online to a lot of people. But I would say that the only reason I'm on YouTube is it's a great free platform and they host a lot of data and they're not charging me monthly. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of they are because they take my AdSense money, but kind of they're not. And, 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 and you know, they kind of make you watch ads, but there at least is a free version. And so we kind of came here and went, this is a great place to share a love of art and teach people around the world for free so they can afford more art supplies because art supplies can be kind of expensive. Right. And now it's turned into this whole thing, but never at any point, like people now like actually say, I want to be a YouTube, a famous YouTube star. They like, 
they say YouTube star. YouTubers. And 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 then and then when you meet people, they're like, "Oh, you're a YouTube star." I'm like, first, not a star. <laughs> not a celebrity. A star. I'm not Mr. Beast. You are I'm a star not for making many AdSense people. money. Amethyst says you're a superstar. Well, thank you. But you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm just here teaching art. It's what I'm doing. Teaching art. It's super awesome. I love to see your paintings and I think y'all are amazing. Continue on with this. I think I want a little bit of my maybe a little more yellow and Get a little green on it. It's interesting. I like to play with these things a little bit. So you can see me kind of working that in there. I'd love that. Just kind of creating that dimensionality around it. I love apples because apples are so colorful. Now, because I use this here, I will want to use that color because it's such a weird color. A couple places just so that we see it around the apple. So, you know, you want to get into it. Just make sure you are putting that around the apple. Honeycrisp are by far my favorite, though there was this in-between apple that came out this year um, that was called the Evercrisp, I think, which was some hybrid, and it was really delicious. So while you're at your store, uh, support your local growers by buying apples locally, help the growers out, and the apples Remember to hit those farmer's markets and uh, those you picks and stuff like that uh, in your area if you have apples that are being grown because the farmers could use your love. And don't forget to pick up some apples and applesauce and all those apple things. We made a point of doing like a lot of extra apple products this year over our uh, big meal and we're going to keep doing lots of apple things. Is it that I just like apples? It could be. It could be. I, uh, I, uh, Denise says, I need for painting details fluid acrylic, but cannot find it. I found acrylic ink. Could I use it instead of fluid acrylic or is there too much difference? Is the ink not enough pigmented? Ah, Denise. Um, so what has happened is Golden Artist Colors calls it fluid. Some other companies sometimes call them, uh, soft bodied or medium bodied. Uh, inks will work just fine. They're just very fluid like an ink. So sometimes I switch over to more of a watercolor brush for them just because I need that finer belly and the way that offloads. You know, just, just know it's super pigmented and it dries just fine. It works with your acrylics just fine. If you really, really can't um, find soft bodied or fluid or any of those in, in the acrylic, yeah, inks are fine. Also, Posca pens are fine. That's a good question. Virgo says, I was watching the Big 12 Championship in the Art Sherpa and was away for a minute. What's the Big 12 Championship? What's the Big 12 Championship? Um, Who are the Big 12? Why are they in the championship? Who are they? I think it's basketball. I, I could believe that. Could be could sports wrong. go it's your a... sports team i'm on your team's team so here's the here's the problem apples are my favorite fruit <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't have an octane rating i don't follow it as a sport i don't follow it when it has an octane rating so i'm gonna rinse out my brush and continue painting sir that's a good thing you want a new step for that <laughs> this would be step 13 well we'll just continue on i'm back over to my yellow ochre we... we're just a touch of same my... step or step again new step New step. We can new step. New step. You got at least one more step in there. Oh, I have many more steps in here. Gay Spangler says, yes, it is 12. It, the Big 12 is basketball. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I did not know. I wasn't sure. They Come put, here. They put the ball in the basket, and then they call it fun. They put the ball in the basket, and they call it fun. I believe in that. My sport was long-distance Horse trail riding and racing, so that isn't really a spectator sport or interesting. So, this <laughs> Unless is you're on the horse. The, the, Just continuing to add these little highlights. Give your apple dimensionality; it will thank you. So this is a horrible thing. Mm. My general. So I was a water polo player in in high school. I'm gonna come here and add a little highlight right there. You were a water polo player in high school, water polo right? po which made my favorite. Um, you know, terrestrial game, dodgeball. Because as a water polo player, you develop one really good skill, and that's throwing a ball, hucking it across the, the, the pool at breakneck speeds. And so, side effect, you get really good at dodgeball. <laughs> 
they don't play that anymore, though. Although you get, you know, 20 water polo players to play dodgeball. It is a mean, I'm mean of a mixed thing. feeling about them taking out dodgeball because I grew up a Jehovah's Witness. I'm oh. Not currently, but I was when I grew up. And, uh, and, and if you are, don't brace. I have no negatives. None. At all. Um, I... Uh, my dad is currently still practicing and he's incredibly happy and many friends were practicing very happy but when i was growing up i was and and i was the only kid in my whole school and so dodgeball was a dangerous dangerous time for me so, it, it, like you dangerous a... time for me because every time i ever had to say that's against my religion i don't know dangerous time for me so i would get nailed like by everybody's ball, those little red balls. I do know how those balls taste. I and do know how those balls feel on every part of my body. And I do absolutely know how much you can get your bell rung when a jelly ball like that hits you. Boom. Boom. And of course, because I was that kid, I was the one who had the most. But then when I would go home and I would tell my parents, they were like, it is a wicked, wicked world. You know, it's it's. <laughs> they were like, I, you my parents were go in and talk to the school. They're like, see, wickedness. You, you haven't <laughs> lived until you have had a a, a cross hatched welt on the side of your head for a couple of hours in you know school. But now I'm saying, as the kid that was the kid that oh, was I targeted, I loved dodgeball. How weird is that? Yeah. I love that game. I had fun. I love dodgeball. See, days. I, Super fun game for me. And I I know I don't know what the drama was that made them take it off of the sport roster but i i enjoyed it I, I think but it i was, could see where that game could in in the, the wrong water, kids hands be a right force of evil it was the water polo team playing that they they were like what you guys know <laughs> no. was it you guys did you guys make it bad for all of us there you go among them for true for sure because i mean So I'm curving my apple line so that it builds the shape of that apple back into the yellow ochre. I've had a little purple doxazine over here and titanium white, and so it's just making it very easy to get the color. Now, Virgo rules in, in I don't know, so in, in water polo, we had a specific water polo ball that had grip on it. Like, you could, it had special grip grip. So it was about the size of a volleyball, except it had, like, this surface that you could just palm and grab and just... Whoo, whoo. Dodgeballs are a, a different type of chaos in and of itself it's this r super Brushing rubber bounce ball with textured surface and it it it, it made a, a particularly unique sound did it Thong. Thong. it had made a particularly neat sound see the best is when you can open hand palm grab one and then block another one with that caught ball that was the so I'm bringing these little lines back in, and you can see the lines kind of also help show the shape of the thing. So even though I'm going to come on the back end with this sort of beigey, beigey, beige line, that's that base yellow apple color that I'm using, to the center, I've got to curve those lines out. If I lose them, I go back over into my center apple color. Brushing back out. And I think we're starting to get some really nice, like, depthy little centers to the apples, aren't we? Gay's like, I didn't move fast enough to get out of the way. Oh, like, I realized really quickly, catch the ball was a really important dodgeball skill. Catch the ball and get revenge. Yes. <laughs> A feeling I wasn't technically allowed to have. But I might have sported more than once. Yeah, Red Rover was another dangerous game. The clo yeah. clothesline your friend game. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow into some green here. And I'm going to get some of my burnt sienna into it. Just to green gold it a bit. I'm going to take this little green gold color and add it to my apple a few places. It, you'll find this color often uh, where the transition from the yellow part of the apple goes into the red. So it's good to sometimes add a few 
little bits of it here and there. It's a gorgeous color. You can add more than even nature has been uh, inclined to give you. I will tell you right now, if you ever decide to set up your own still lifes, okay, and, and you want to do something like this, the farmer's market is your friend. You don't want pretty grocery store fruit. Oh, that's a whole video we could do. Oh. You, you want some ugly fruit. You want, uh, you want, you want fruit with character. character. <laughs> yeah, you do. Amy said she has to question. I'm going to scroll up and see. Oh, okay. I Let's find catch it. it I'm going to come right here and I'm going to continue to add a little of this green yellow. For some reason. Through my be... apple a few places. And then here I will dry brush a little bit down into it, okay? Because I see that there's some of that green there. You know, Amy, I'm scrolling up. Whatever happened to your question, like both times you've asked if it. If you have it set on top questions, it won't show you everything. You have see. to switch it to all chat to see every I comment. See. That's where I was losing it. I don't know that that will help you, but it used Let's to help me. Do. Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm just kind of putting that all the way through. Very much like that. Look at that. Making them glow. I'm scrolling so up true, to see if John. I can find Amy's question. <sighs> Take a breath. Breathe in the good feelings of your excellent painting that you're loving doing today. You breathe it in. You love it. You know it. It's true. You don't give up till it's taken care of. Nope. I scroll all the way up. It didn't wouldn't go. All the way. Amy says, it's all good. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think um, YouTube and Facebook, all the social media platforms will vanish comments on occasion because like that week in the community management meeting, some spam thing was trending like right now and i want to apologize to everybody from the bottom of my heart the zit videos well, that are yeah. all over my facebook posts i'm so sorry for the zit video links so gross i report every one of them report them all report them all and uh they take them down and stuff it's just uh, so every once in a while it seems like there's some innocuous innocent word that we all use because we're normal people that spammers also sometimes use that make us go to facebook jail for a half a second till they figure out how to tune it in. I am going to mist my water. And I am going to continue painting my apple with my round brush because I'm really liking how that's working out. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my dioxazine purple and maybe some glazing medium. Maybe a little more ultramarine blue. That's what it is. Hmm. Yeah, I just got a little bit too low on there. I messed up my highlights, so that's why my finger got involved. Sometimes my finger will get involved if I mess up my highlights. It's a good thing. I really, really like to uh, do that. A little bit of purple. I think this honey crisp got a little big on me. It's okay. Get a little of my brown black going here. Yeah. Ooh. And I'm going to add this out. I'm kind of glazing it out. Put a lot of glazing liquid in it so I could put this out into some snow. Into the snow. Into the snow. Are we ready for a new step for the snow, or is this? No, we're still just painting. Still going. Okay. You let me know when we're ready for the new step. I will tell you. <laughs> Just 
just adding some shadows and everything to this now just to weight weight my things down because they need weight and i weighted them now they're all dimensional i love how stuff gets dimensional the minute you drop a shadow on it yeah you start dropping shadows and highlights on things and it gets crazy and real okay new step's fine new step mm -hmm. i'm gonna take a little bit of my cad yellow and my white and a little of my yellow ochre is there and i need to start making my lighter top color this top color is like it's a weird color i'm gonna be real honest buddy it's a strange color <laughs> i'm finding my way into it Just keep making it more interesting, don't we? I think that's what's fun is that when you're new, like maybe when you're a new painter, or at least when I was a new painter, I would not have thought it was really groovy to do still lifes. Like I was never like, woohoo, still life day in art class. Mm -mm. I was just like, fine fine work we have to do and i wish i had stopped and appreciated the still life work more there we go just a little bit of that highlight there i will be bringing some red on everything up to that i just gotta Little green, yellow. Even a little more. Back there, just more highlight. Hmm. Oh, I know what I'll do. I have a real cool trick I'll do to get that where I want it to be exactly. It's doing pretty good, isn't it? Look at it go. Building up, building up, building up. Ah. So, here's a good question. I don't love that leaf, but I'm going to leave it in. So, Amy says, Amy! In the reference pick, the overall tones are cool. Cinnamon has painted it with warm tones. How does Cinnamon decide which tones to paint? Is it a personal preference? It is this. <laughs> so, I am working a lot of warm colors, but sometimes I have to paint to the... Um, and, it, and it's been a frustrating thing to even use references because of this. Um, what happens on my canvas and on the screen and on my monitor and on your monitor at home is so different. It just completely throws me. And so sometimes I have to paint to just what's in front so. of me and then just go with that. And then if I, it, I can't mention it to John because that really throws him off. Because very often he can't fix it during a live show. And also we are further into this. But yes, this is much warmer. Yeah. So what happens a lot of times is, that, is it, this one. This one here is is a good example of it being warmer. But the and I'm uh, going to take a little bit of my red and purple. Cinnamon can't. So she looks through a teleprompter, 
which changes all of the colors because it's looking through a, a, a semi semi transparent piece of glass so it's really hard for her to see on the screen what colors you guys are seeing so there to your right a little more purple at the bottom your left cinnamon you can see that we're actually not too bad there so the uh and what ends up happening is is that um there's a very subtle color shift sometimes in in when the between what the camera picks up and what cinnamon paints and this is why it's so extraordinarily difficult to get a photo of a painting that's perfect. The colors are extraordinarily hard to 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 manage. Um, I'm just moving this up a little bit bigger. I felt like I needed a little more weight on it. You know, in in the reproduction process, there's the camera that picks it up. There's the computer that processes that camera, and then there's the image generating tool. And so you're you're your uh, your your screen there the screen can have different settings the player can have different settings the compression algorithm that goes between you and me changes the colors too so let's start working into the apple a little bit let's take a little bit of our cad red and a little bit of our cad yellow into kind of a bright orange while john is still talking yeah. and we're going to start putting in a little more orange into our apple but yeah in general this cinnamon is working a little warmer than the uh in the painting there. There's definitely more yellows in the in the background than there are blues. So <laughs> Amy, so is the screen calibrated at the factory? That's a good question. So So uh, well, I mean, uh, the thing is is that the minute you get into color profiles, uh, now that there's AI, I actually think everything's going to match. But when you get into uh, color profiles, my screen, my printer, my system, my cameras, everything has to be the same. Yeah, they use a calibration tool. So there's actually a little eye that looks at it and matches the color across oh, them. That's the whole thing. And it always has been. So if on your screen that you guys I'm are using... I'm putting this little more orange through this sort of mid-range of the apple. Here's a good way. If you guys, on whatever TV you're looking at right now, in your settings... Under picture, you're going to have different modes, which is standard, vibrant, cinema, movie, things like that. You'll find that if as soon as you go to standard color profile, things look way different than they do under cinema or movie. Which is oh like, yeah, sometimes your TV like that's what's wrong. I watched a whole movie yeah. <laughs> and I left a review because it was like black. And then yeah, and I was like, that's the dumbest movie ever. Couldn't see any Couldn't of see it. it. And then as soon as you switched your, your TV. Yeah, my thing was not, it was one of those movies where they filmed it dark. It was just and so dark. if you don't have it on the right setting, the whole movie's just a black screen. Yeah. I'm just coming here and we're going to just, you know, start to think about each. The portrait of the apples is kind of what we're painting now. I'm going to get a little bit of glaze here. It's super duper fun. I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry. No, you're you're doing fine. I'm just we're just hanging out. So I just paint how I paint. Try not to let all the little stuff get to me. Yeah, we're just getting a little of that orange into our apple now. And I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my quinacridone and my zinc. Come here at the bottom kind of with this. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things is, is that when my brush strokes are at the bottom of the apple, they're curving. When they're at the top, they're curving. When they're on the left, they're curving left. When they're on the right, they're curving right. They're curving. They're curving. 
think I've just made this one apple so much bigger. Definitely not a fax machine. Yeah, or copy machine. Mm-mm. Because you don't send it over the 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 telephone either. <laughs> but I mean, just myself <laughs> as a person, like just not a copy machine, which is okay because, well, that's a crime. I might go even into the orange a little more. Here. Ah, it's getting a little more into that window. I love it. Just pulling some more of that brighter bright. And it's okay that down in that shading area, it's just not reading it. Mm. You don't need it to. Yep. yep Amy, you're yeah, that's exactly right. Back when um, we were doing... Uh, uh, film-based photography. There were there were red-toned films and green-toned films. I cannot tell you how many couple conversations. The fact that we maybe almost needed to get therapy over the color balance <laughs> of the studio. <laughs> Y'all have no idea. So many. I'm gonna just come here and make sure I got a little. I like to pop some of these reds around different places too. That is a me thing. I feel like sometimes if you have an unusual color, it's good to, to get it a couple places where, you know, you would need it to be. We're going to take this up a little redder. So let's take a little bit of our quinacridone and our cad red together. I still try to leave a lot of what's here, here. That can make sense. Where it's really going to read very red, but mm -hmm. a lot of what's already, all that work I did, I don't want it to go away. I'm going to tap this up and down, kind of talking about the irregularity there. And I'm going to hit that reflection a little more carefully. But generally, how I decide to uh, hue a painting is my mood, hmm. the day. The mood. <laughs> the mood, the day, uh, where I was at when I took a picture, where I'm at when I paint that picture. All those different things affect greatly, you know, kind of how I might be inclined to even do something. I'm going to come and bring some of this too. Remember when we talked about bringing some different colors? How many colors do berries need? I don't know. All the colors. Paint them. You're not sorry that you painted berries. No. And add just little hints of red here and there. Kind of like little freckling imperfections. 
little thing. And then I've got a lot more yellow. Just a little bit of fun on my apple, right? Now, uh, from here, I'm going to want to get my Mars Black and my Burnt Sienna together. How are we doing today, John? Good. Are we well, doing very all right? Very good, I think. All right. Good, good, good. Now I'm going to paint my stems back in. You're gonna paint the stems. You're gonna paint the stems. You were whispering, so I didn't know if you were saying lean out of the way. No. Oh, okay. She's watching. You're doing good. <laughs> Ramona enjoyed watching your uh, your dad on his dirt bike. Oh my gosh! Is my dad not like what? Yeah, I'm not like my. I do not take after my dad on the physical uh, fitness scale at all. He is absolutely. I don't know. Eighty-seven. Um, he just recently um, broke all four ribs and oh and he's out there riding that bike uh, you know just like I don't think those guys even know what they got themselves yeah. into it's so cool I'm really proud of him I'm very proud my dad if you don't know um, has been riding uh, off-road dirt bikes my uh, entire life and going up to Moab my entire life but now it's like a big deal to go to moab now like mm -hmm. they got trails and there's a line to get into the park and it used to be it was you don't go there except for a couple times a year because you could die there and it was for extreme riders who were just out of their minds but apparently they all found each other and found a community and now they got youtube channels and my dad got filmed by a guy who was like what do you mean you've been here like ride moab since like 1950 <laughs> And then they were like, we got to hang out with this dude. But what they didn't show is that my dad fully face planted and they had to come help him and everything. And they had like, they had more of an adventure day than they meant to. Yeah. I'm going to improve that kind of branchiness, I think. So that when I go to add snow to it, I'm uh, happy with it. I'm going to get some of my orange going. Really a yellow orange. You're like, really? Stems too? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. All of it. All of it. It's a whole thing. It's a whole, whole thing. Okay, I'll put a little bit of my zinc over there and get some of my apple color and my zinc together. Yep, that's it. Yep. Looking good. So there's a little zinc in my apple color. Apple color. So sometimes these shines are real hard to get and that's where they come from or at least that's where I get them is through my um, zinc. Mm. Where I can highlight my red a bit but not have to specifically like change its hue. And so I can get some of that light reflected back and some of that 
going on there. A little bit of my yellow orange. A little bit of color here and there. I'm going to get a little of my light yellow again, which was my cad yellow, my yellow ochre, and titanium white. Yeah. Add some of that. A little bit there. And while we're at it, I could probably... Add some of that around to some of where my stick could use a little punch. Hmm. Let's get up to our ultramarine blue and our burnt sienna. And I got some this weight is, on me. Everyone says how beautiful this is. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that's how you guys feel. Because I want you guys to do paintings y'all enjoy. Deeply. 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 I need to get some kind of snow on that. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of my cad orange into my burnt sienna. Back into my black. Back in black. Back in black. Woo! Uh, we're adding shadows. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm looking for a color or a highlight or like anything. I'm like, anything, anything, anything. <laughs> so I'm just adding a little highlight to the stems just so that they're not boring. Just Bond says, this is going to be a five hoot for me. This is a big painting, guys. It's every once in a while we'll do a big painting and then we'll do some smaller paintings and then we'll do some bigger paintings and we'll do them all live and it will be wonderful. We'll, we'll know what we're doing and who we're doing it with. It'll be super fun. All right, let's uh, let's add some ribbles, some ribbles. Sometimes if I go around a like a leaf out or whatever, it does some cool stuff to it. Just coming here with a little burnt sienna and orange black, and I'm just kind of working some little illustrative like details to my leaf. Why? Because Why? I came. <laughs> I felt like it. I don't really need another reason than that. But also because I think it will help everything have the high level of detail that I'm trying to get it to have. Yeah. And so by going through and making sure that my leaves roll where they roll and they I exaggerate some value things.
this black and just adding little details. Little details. And then I can come in and sort of darken up anything that I feel like needs a little more punch. Yeah. All right. Got so many greens. Let's go through with the light green. Let's get a little yellow in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mix a little white. A little more green, yellow, and brown. See how we're putting these leaves back? We're putting the detail back without painting the detail, aren't we? Get a little more yellow over here. I think I'm going to get some white involved. <coughs> Robin definitely thinks this looks amazing. Thank you, Robin. Well, thank you for your support, Robin. And Mary, thank you so much. <laughs> Apple paintings remind me of pear paintings. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm going to do that to y'all, and then I don't scare y'all with some pears. Just making sure that the little leaves that are here have just enough detail to show, but not so much that they're throwing my whole thing off. Mm-hmm. I don't want to throw my whole thing off. Alrighty. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna together and I'll make my snow gray. Snow gray. Bring a little white over there. Get a nice little snow gray color. Okay. Adding the, the shadow of snow. Right there. That's pretty nice. Like So that's come in a little bit. Things are not staying where they are. Are we on a new step or not a new step? We are not yet, but we can go to a new we step. We should go to a new step, I think. There All we right. go. New step. So now I'm going to take a little bit of my white thank you into so my much. snow color. Oh, thank you guys so For much. Support, I'm so yeah. glad you guys enjoy these lessons. I'm going to make sure we add another little lightly layered. It's pretty good. Okay.
Now, everything off the front of the table is going to need to be a little, kind of wiggle some. Just a wiggle it there. Thank you. Some nice little snow things. Oh, thank you so much to everybody that is being so generous and so kind. Thank you so, so, so much. So, 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 so much. A little more white. A little darker. That's a little lighter than I want, so I'm going to darken that up because that's the front. So the snow that is off the front of the table. It can have little highlights, but it will have, we're going to have to create a really wonderful little contrast. And go ahead and add a little bit of brown to some white. That's Thank going to help Vera. our snow. Thank you so much. And Mary, we had three up at one point if you go back. Mary and Robin, thank you. I'll let that dry for just a second. And now I'm going to get a lot of white. All right, so just painting up our little leaves, seeing everything, where can it go, what can it do? Just playing with that contrast, right? That's a really nice contrast. Playing with how these leaves pop out from the background mm -hmm. in each other. Just a little bit, right? Just yeah. showing up here and there. Now I'm going to take my filbert, which is my number eight precision filbert, and I'm going to get into my snow which again is my ultramarine blue and my titanium white with a little bit of burnt sienna.
And then come along that edge there. And if I go in front of that berry, John, you got to be where I'm at. Sorry. When I come along that uh, that little edge there, I'll probably have to fix that. But I think I'll put your shadow back. Yeah? Yeah, I think I'm going to put some shadows back. That way we have a nice defined front shelf. Yep. A little bit on the branches, right? If I need it to be darker, if I over lighten it, I just mm -hmm. come back with a little bit of blue, see? Oh, yeah. Just blew it up a little bit. And that will keep the shadow, and if it needs to be even darker, I just get a little of the brown in it. So I can get the snow back to where it was and just have a little highlight. I think I pushed my little berry further back, so I've got to... Still get its little shadow, but okay. Now I'm gonna take a little of my blue, and my glazing medium. Huh. Get some people eating apples. Mm -hmm. You got some people who are eating apples while watching you paint apples. But not painted apples, because that would not be good for you. No, don't eat painted apples. Just apples. Don't do it. This is that blue. Burn sienna and blue. Which are transparent kind of anyways. Mm -hmm. Just more so here. And that's a perfect. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and white. Dry brush kind of around.
A little bit of a highlight there. A little bit of a highlight there. A little bit of one here. To just take a little bit of my yellow and white. A little glazing medium. And a little bit right there. So the glaze lets me get some transparent reflections and then I can build them up into uh, steeper reflections, which is pretty good. So that's how I can get that high, high shine. So that's the titanium white and a little lemon yellow and a little um, glaze. That one's pretty bright right there. It can also go zinc, which is pretty friendly to my cause. Yeah, so if anyone's... Sorry if I'm quiet. No, I'm just, just thinking, thinking super hard here. It's a good time to give us a thumbs up if you're hanging out in there. It is a good time. If I suppose it really is. In that quiet break. I'm going to grab that, a little zinc right here and just see how that... Oh, that's perfect. That's lovely. So it just goes right over the apple. Just barely a... These transparent little reflections are so important to how something like this looks reflective. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. This is just the zinc. I haven't even gotten the titanium white involved yet. Mm. On my bears. Oh, my bears. Sometimes I'll get a little of my zinc if I feel like I've gotten too d dark with something. Mm -hmm. Come over and look. It keeps it still in the shadow, but it just...
Just making sure that all these things have the little definitions and stuff to pop. This is fantastic, George. I agree. Oh, thank you. I'm going to come here and add just a little bit of bright white in the center of that reflection. And then just a little bit there. So it's just this, this white is not its biggest. A little bit of highlight there and a little bit across there. We're just trying to make these apples the shiniest. Not from wax, but from just having a perfect growing season, you know? How shiny are your apples now? Pretty shiny. Super right? shiny. How shiny are your this apples? So How shiny are uh, uh, apples? How loose is your goose? How loose is your goose? Just building up those reflections. Now, while we're here. It's just incredible. Sometimes it helps to rinse out because the paint will literally start to dry on your brush. I'm so glad we're getting here. Yeah? Yeah. I'm super glad we're getting here. Turned out so good. It's a big project to do. Yeah, it is. And a big project to do live. Just making little high reflections on the deep berries as well. Wow, so nice. I'm loving it. I am really okay with it. I'm happy with how this is going. Yeah, I am too. This is I'm adding ever... a little bit of white to my branch here just to... I can't believe how lifelike those branches have turned out. Yeah, it all just pulled together. You know, sometimes I'm like, hey, we're going to be here for a minute. But here's the thing. You learn. You live. You learn. You cry. You learn. Huh. You learn. You learn. Uh, unfortunately, all of the hard stuff is the learning stuff. I could go all day, guys, but I think I'm tired. Huh. <laughs> it's really where it's at. I could paint all day. You could, but man, this I is. I could paint all day. And everybody agrees how beautiful this is. Thank this is just you amazing. so much. You know what it is missing, though? Hmm. A signature? Your name! I'm going to take a little bit of the doxazine purple doxazine. and the cad red. Red, 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 we are painting apples, yes, we are. And thank you, uh, everybody, for supporting us so you can learn thank more. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Now, I, I do need something from them, though. What you need? So you better make me big. Okay. Got to make me big, and I'll pull my brushes aside to be washed. To be washed. That painting, that painting. I hope you recorded the overhead because it's going to make a nice short. I have. All the parts of it. It's so many parts. I'm such a weird peach right now. 
Okay, so there's something I got to tell you guys. Tell them. Um, but first, I got to kind of, if you don't mind me enjoying uh, my little apples for a second, because I really enjoyed them. And, you, you know, it's one thing to paint quietly by yourself. It's another thing to do it live. And so I so appreciate everybody coming in. And I hope you love your apples and I love mine. Now, here's what you need to know. If you like vintage art, you're going to want to go by Patreon and you're going to vote, even if you're not a patron. Go by and vote. Go, uh, they can vote. At all level of patrons should vote because mm. every level of patron will eventually get it. But the Zoom class is Sunday at 1 p.m. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. 1 p.m. And we're going to be doing... On the Art Trip Show. It really looks like the Vintage Snowman, but go vote because you might be like, no, Vintage Bells, no, Vintage Ornaments. Ah, ah. Go buy and vote. Um, so we're going to be doing that tomorrow. You, and remember, it starts at 1230 is when we let everybody in for games and social. Yep, we're good. Class starts at 1, then we go for a while, and then there. That's the one thing you need to know. Now, every, everybody needs to do this, though. Everybody. Everybody. Um, Tuesday is a gorgeous cardinal on a pine brow. Do you want me to teach you how to do that in oil pastel? Do you want me to teach you how to do that in acrylic? What's or do an... you want to teach me want me to teach you how to do that in watercolor? Go buy and vote on that. But wait, what's the difference between an oil pastel and a regular pastel? Chalk. <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll right? explain the that The soft then? one that's like chalkboard chalk, that is a soft pastel or chalk pastel. Oh. Oil pastel will remind you of crayons, but they're not. These particular ones were made for Pablo Picasso, not the exact set, but the whole line of them was created for him. And I'll tell you that whole story if that one's the vote. Um, and so you're gonna wanna, you're gonna vote on that. Tell me how you wanna do that. Then on Thursday is a landscape, 11 by 14. You guys so loved the last winter cabin campfire that we did, I thought we should visit the lake again. So that is coming up. We've got landscapes. We've got snow foxes. We've got more snowmen. We've got stuff all the way through the season. The Every through. kind of winter itch that you need to scratch, we need to scratch. And more stuff like this. So from realistic to one hoop, right? So we can go back to one hoot and then up to three hoot. We're going to be doing all of the things. And that's what's going on for you guys that you have to do. That's your assignments. Go vote on what you want. Oil pastel or not. And go buy a vote on the uh, vintage or not. Um, and I set it up where you can try both the Zoom level and the um, just all level patron level um, for try it free. And I think that should let you try stuff. And if ever you're in the middle of a class that you did with us on a patron and you decided for whatever reason, like maybe Patreon uh, doesn't do billing you like, or I, it doesn't even matter. I just love you guys. So it doesn't even matter. You don't even have to explain yourself to me at all. That's how much I care about. You don't have to explain to me why at all. But if you go in and you're like, ah, this patronage is not for me, but I'm halfway done and I need the video, write us because we're not here to keep you out of the art club. So write us. Or I'm going to be real honest. If there's ever anything I did that you just want to do, write us. I might send you a link because I'm super nice like that. I'm just that way. I'm not here to like keep you in or out or any of that. Uh, could you use pan pastels versus oil pastels? Linda DB, I can, but let me do this thing for you. Um, I don't know if you know this, but Golden Artist Colors actually saved pan pastels over the pandemic. And now, now when Golden Artist Colors saves a company, what that means is they actually save it. They save the people that know how to do, like, the make the product. So the people that make the, the paint or make the pastel, the people that run it, like, the people, like, they actually come in. They started this with an oil company when a friend of theirs died, when a friend of Mark's died. And they just saved his whole company and kept it going because they're these are considered heritage brands, right? Like, these are... These are special art supplies that should never go away and always be there for artists. That said, when Golden took it, they did a bunch of testing and, and they found a bunch of stuff. And I want to come out with some more educational information on pan pastels based on that research. So it's the Sennelier. Those are the ones done for Pe Picasso oil pastels. Um, a bunch of those techniques will cross over. So it's OK. And I'll probably teach you a whole technique page because I made a whole technique page. So I'll, I'll teach you a whole technique page. Um, Shannon's like, should I log into Patreon on my laptop? I'm going to say I don't see, I haven't. So I think that's about your browser and your phone. I'm not really sure. I log into it from my 
desktop, I'm on an iPhone. I'm up to date and I use uh, Google Chrome. Right. So sometimes my stuff is good. Sometimes my stuff is not good, depending on where my updates are at. And that would be my recommendation to you whenever you're like trying to see something. And listen, if you're already a patron at the $15 level, you get uh, you get those things. So please or higher if you're a patron at, at the 25 or higher. I could do art coaching. So write us if you've already signed into our website. You signed up with us a long time ago. You're an automatic billing. You know, it doesn't open up Patreon for you. That's them. That's their own thing. We just give you all the stuff. So write us and we'll make sure you have everything. Yes. You write us and we'll make sure we help you find the stuff. So write us support at the and and um and that and then we are in the middle of our winter wonder program. I hope you felt like it was wintry and you are in wonder. We will continue to winter and wonder along as we do all the way through December. Yeah. Um, and I would like my Australian peeps who are not here right now, because maybe you are. Maybe you stayed up all night. I don't know why you did, but maybe you did. Um, we're going to try to do some more 11 a.m.s. Uh, we know we had more of our Australian family was able to make it 11 a.m. And the other thing is, is that um, if you're not too sick of animals wearing Santa hats, I might have a koala in me. That's Christmas Ooh. for my Australian friends who have been very patient oh, these many years. Actually, it is happening. You're just going to have a koala with a hat. I don't want to tell you. I've been putting Santa hats on everything this year. That's what's happening. What is this? Snowmen and Santa hats are what is happening for me right now. And apples. It's all about apples. I'm going to go eat a honey crisp. Such I actually have a bag upstairs. Winter wallaby weirdness. <laughs> it's so warm and cool. It's so funny. Uh, buy us more blue. I don't know. All right, guys, I love you. I can't wait to see your paintings. You can share them in group, online, the Art Sherpa, everywhere I am. Watch the shorts when they happen. Watch the recorded when they happen. Uh, a new beginner class will be coming up soon, soon, soon. I want you guys to be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I'll see you at a really soon. Bye-bye.